The Shoemaker by Thomas Decker. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Dramatis Personae. The King, read by Andrew Utley. The Earl of Cornwall and a Nobleman. Read by David Olson. Sir Hugh Lacey, Earl of Lincoln. Read by David Prickett. Roland Lacey, otherwise Hans, nephew to Sir Hugh. Read by Rob Board. Askew. Read by Lydia. Sir Roger Oatley, Lord Mayor of London. Read by Bruce Peary. Haven. Read by Hamlet. Master Warner. Read by David Olson. Master Scott. Read by Newgate Novelist. Simon Eyre, The Shoemaker. Read by Peter Tucker. Roger. Commonly called Hodge. Heirs, jour heirs Journeyman. Read by Todd. Ferk. Read by Richard Ship. Rafe. Read by Negatron. Lovell. Read by Marianne. Dodger. Read by Honoria. A Dutch Skipper. Read by Anna Simon. Boy. Read by Stufi. Rose. Daughter of Sir Roger. Read by Beth Thomas. Sybil. Rose's Maid. Read by Mary Kay. Marjorie, the wife of Simon Eyre, read by Abai. Jane, read by Elizabeth Clatt. A Prentice, read by Joseph Tabler. Serving Men and Those of Hammond's Side, read by Sandra Schmidt. Three Men's Song, sung by Iswa. Stage Directions and Prologue, read by Christine G. End of Dramatis Personae. One of the Shoemaker's Holiday by Thomas Decker. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Prologue, as it was pronounced before the Queen's Majesty. As wretches in a storm, expecting day, with trembling hands and eyes cast up to heaven, make prayers the anchor of their conquered hopes, so we, dear goddess, wonder of all eyes, your meanest vassals, through mistrust and fear, to sink into the bottom of disgrace, by our imperfect pastimes prostrate thus, on bended knees our sails of hope do strike, dreading the bitter storms of your dislike. Since then unhappy men are happiest such, that to ourselves ourselves no help can bring, but needs must perish, if your saint-like heirs, locking the temple where all mercy sits, Refuse the tribute of our begging to begging tongues. O oh, grant, bright mirror of true chastity, From those life-breathing stars your sun-like eyes, One gracious smile, for your celestial breath, Must send us life, or sentin us to death. Act the First Scene One A street in London Enter the Lord Mayor and the Earl of Lincoln. My Lord Mayor, you have sundry times feasted myself and many courtiers more. Seldom or never can we be so kind to make requital of your courtesy. But leaving this, I hear my cousin Lacey is much affected to your daughter Rose. True, my good lord, and she loves him so well that I mislike her boldness in the chase. Why, my lord mayor, think you it then a shame to join a Lacey with an Oatley's name? Too mean is my poor girl for his high birth. Poor citizens must not with courtiers wed, who will in silks and gay apparel spend more in one year than I am worth by far. Therefore your honour need not doubt my girl. Well, take heed, my lord. Advise you what you do. A very unthrift lives not in the world than is my cousin. For I'll tell you what, tis now almost a year since he requested to travel countries for experience. I furnished him with coin, bills of exchange, letters of credit, men to wait on him, solicited my friends in Italy well to respect him. But to see the end, scant had he journeyed through half Germany, but all his coin was spent, his men cast off, his bills embezzled, and my jolly cuz, ashamed to show his bankrupt presence here, became a shoemaker in Wittenberg, a goodly science for a gentleman of such descent. Now judge the rest by this. Suppose your daughter have a thousand pound, he did consume me more in one half year, and make him heir to all the wealth you have? One twelve months rioting will waste it all. 
Then seek, my lord, some honest citizen to wed your daughter to. I thank your lordship. Aside. Well, Fox, I understand your subtlety. As for your nephew, let your lordship's eye but watch his actions, and you need not fear, for I have sent my daughter far enough. And yet your cousin Roland might do well, now he hath learned an occupation, and yet I scorn to call him son-in-law. Ay, but I have a better trade for him. I thank his grace. He hath appointed him chief colonel of all those companies mustered in London and the shire about, to serve his highness in those wars of France. See where he comes. Enter Lovell, Lacey, and Askew. Lovell, what news with you? My lord Lincoln, tis his highness's will, that presently your cousin ship for France with all his powers. He would not for a million, but they should land at deep within four days. Go certify his grace, it shall be done. Exit Lovell. Now, cousin Lacey, in what forwardness are all your companies? All well prepared. The men of Hertfordshire lie at Mile End, Suffolk and Essex train in Tothill Fields, the Londoners and those of Middlesex all gallantly prepared in Finsbury, with frolic spirits long for their parting hour. They have their impressed coats and furniture, and if it please your cousin Lacey come to the Guildhall, he shall receive his pay, and twenty pounds besides my brethren will freely give him to approve our loves we bear unto my lord, your uncle here. I thank your honour. Thanks, my good lord mayor. At the Guildhall we will expect your coming. Exit. To approve your loves to me. No, subtlety. Nephew, that twenty pound he doth bestow for joy to rid you from his daughter Rose. But cousins both, now here are none but friends. I would not have you cast an amorous eye upon so mean a project as the love of a gay, wanton painted citizen. I know this churl, even in the height of scorn, doth hate the mixture of his blood with thine. I pray thee, do thou so. Remember, cuz, what honourable fortunes wait on thee. Increase the king's love, which so brightly shines and gilds thy hopes. I have no heir but thee, and yet not thee, if with a wayward spirit thou start from the true bias of my love. My lord, I will for honour, not desire of land or livings, or to be your heir. So guard my actions in pursuit of France, as shall add glory to the Lacy's name. Cuz. For those words he is thirty Portuguese, and nephew ask you there's a few for you. Fair honour in her loftiest eminence stays in France for you till you fetch her thence. Then nephews, clap swift wings on your designs. Be gone, be gone, make haste to the guild hall. There presently I'll meet you. Do not stay. Where honour beckons, shame attends delay. Exit. How gladly would your uncle have you gone? True, cuz, but I'll o'erreach his policies. I have some serious business for three days which nothing but my presence can dispatch. You, therefore, cousin, with the companies, shall haste to Dover. There I'll meet with you. Or if I stay past my prefixed time, away for France, we'll meet in Normandy. The twenty pounds my Lord Mayor gives to me you shall receive. And these ten Portuguese... Part of mine uncle's thirty. Gentle cuz, have care to our great charge. I know your wisdom hath tried itself in higher consequence. Cuz, all myself am yours, yet have this care, to lodge in London with all secrecy. Our uncle Lincoln hath, besides his own, many a jealous eye that in your face stares only to watch means for your disgrace. Uh, stay, cousin, who be these? Enter Simon Eyre, Marjorie his wife. Hodge, Firk, Jane, and Rafe with a pair of shoes. Leave whining, leave whining. Away with this whimpering, this puling, these blubbering tears and these wet eyes. I'll get thy husband discharged, I warrant thee, sweet Jane. Go to. Master, here be the captains. Peace, Hodge. Hush, ye knave, hush. Here be the cavaliers and the colonels, master. Peace, Firk. Peace, my fine Firk. Stand by with your pissery pashery. Away. I am a man of the best presence. I'll speak to them, and they were popes. <clears throat> Gentlemen, captains, colonels, commanders, 
brave men brave leaders may it please you to give me audience i am simon eyre the mad shoemaker of tower street this wench with the mealy mouth that will never tire is my wife i can tell you he is hodge my man and my foreman he is firk my fine firking journeyman and this is blubbered jane all we come to be suitors for this honest rafe keep him at home and as i am a true shoemaker and a gentleman of the gentle craft buy spurs yourselves and i'll find your boots these seven years seven years husband peace midriff peace i know what i do peace truly master cormorant you shall do god good service to let ralph and his wife stay together she's a young new married woman if you take her husband away from her a night you undo her she may beg in the daytime for he's as good a workman at a prick and an awl as any is in our trade oh let him stay else i shall be undone ay truly she shall be laid at one side like a pair of old shoes else and be occupied for no use truly my friends it lies not in my power the londoners are pressed paid and set forth by the lord mayor i cannot change a man why then you were as good to be a corporal as a colonel if you could not discharge one good fellow and i tell you true i think you do more than you can answer to press a man within a year and a day of his marriage well said melancholy hodge gramercy my fine foreman truly gentlemen it were ill done for such as you to stand so stiffly against a poor young wife considering her case she is new married but let that pass i pray deal not roughly with her her husband is a young man and but newly entered but let that pass away with your pishery pashery your poles on your eddy poles peace midriff silence sicily bum trinket let your head speak yea and the horns too master too soon my fine folk too soon peace scoundrels see you this man captains you will not release him well let him go he's a proper shot let him vanish peace jane dry up thy tears they'll make his powder dankish take him brave men hector of troy was an hackney to him hercules and termagant scoundrels prince arthur's round table by the lord of ludgate ne'er fed such a tall such a dapper swordsman by the life of pharaoh a brave resolute swordsman peace jane i say no more mad knaves see see hodge how my master raves in commendation of ralph Rave, thou'rt a gull by this hand and thou goest not i am glad good master ere it is my hap to meet so resolute a soldier trust me for your report and love to him a common slight regard shall not respect him is thy name rafe yes sir give me thy hand thou shalt not want as i am a gentleman uh, woman be, be patient god no doubt will send thy husband safe again but he must go his country's quarrel says it shall be so thou'rt a gull by my stirrup if thou dost not go i will not have thee strike thy gimlet into these weak vessels prick thine enemies rafe enter dodger my lord your uncle on the tower hill stays with the lord mayor and the alderman and doth request you with all speed you may to hasten thither cousin let's go dodger run you before tell them we come exit dodger this dodger is mine uncle's parasite the arrantest varlet that e'er breathed on earth he sets more discord in a noble house by one day's broaching of his pick thank tales than can be salved again in twenty years and he i fear shall go with us to france to pry into our actions therefore cuz it shall be hove you to be circumspect fear not good cousin rafe hie to your colours i must because there's no remedy but gentle master and my loving dame as you have always been a friend to me so in mine absence think upon my wife alas my rafe she cannot speak for weeping peace you cracked groats you mustard tokens 
disquiet not the brave soldier go thy ways rafe ay ay you bid him go what shall i do when he is gone why be doing with me or my fellow hodge be not idle let me see thy hand jane this fine hand this white hand these pretty fingers must spin must card must work work you bombast cotton candle queen work for your living with a pox to you hold thee rafe here's five sixpences for thee fight for the honour of the gentle craft for the gentlemen shoemakers the courageous cordwainers the flower of st martin's the mad knaves of bedlam fleet street tower street and whitechapel crack me the crowns of the french knaves a pox on them crack them fight by the lord of Ludgate. fight my fine boy here ralph here's three tuppences two carry into france the third shall wash our souls at parting for sorrow is dry for my sake firk the bassa mon cues rafe i am heavy at parting but here's a shilling for thee god send thee to cram thy slops with french crowns and thy enemies bellies with bullets i thank you master and i thank you all now gentle wife my loving lovely jane rich men at parting give their wives rich gifts jewels and rings to grace their lily hands thou knowest our trade makes rings for women's eels here take this pair of shoes cut out by odge stitched by my fellow firk seamed by myself made up and pinked with letters for thy name wear them my dear jane for thy husband's sake and every morning when thou pullest them on remember me and pray for my return make much of them for i have made them so that i can know them from a thousand mo drum sounds enter the lord mayor the earl of lincoln lacy askew dodger and soldiers they pass over the stage rafe falls in amongst them Firk and the rest cry farewell, farewell etc and so exant end of act 1「Of the Shoemaker's Holiday」by Thomas Decker This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act II. Scene 1. A garden at Old Ford. Enter Rose, alone, making a garland. Here, sit thou down upon this flowery bank, and make a garland for thy lacy's head these pinks these roses these violets these blushing gillyflowers these marigolds the fair embroidery of his coronet carry not half such beauty in their cheeks as the sweet countenance of my lacy doth o oh, my most unkind father o oh, my stars why lowered you so at my nativity to make me love yet live robbed of my love here as a thief am i imprisoned for my dear lacy's sake within those walls which by, which by my father's cost were builded up for better purposes here must i languish for him that doth as much lament i know mine absence as for him i pine in woe enter sibyl good morrow young mistress i am sure you make that garland for me against i shall be lady of the harvest sibyl what news at london none but good my lord mayor your father and master philpot your uncle and master scott your cousin and mistress frigbottom by doctor's commons do all by my troth send you most hearty commendations did lacy send kind greetings to his love oh yes out of cry by my troth i scant knew him here wore a scarf, and here a scarf, here a bunch of feathers, and here precious stones and jewels, and a pair of garters, oh, monstrous, like one of our yellow silk curtains at home here in old Ford House, here in Master Bellymount's chamber. I stood at her door in Cornhill, looked at him, he at me indeed, spake to him, but he not to me, not a word. Mary go up, I thought. What a winian! He passed by me as proud. Mary, foe! Are you grown humorous? thought I, and so shut the door, and in I came. 
Oh, Sybil, how dost thou my lacy wrong? My Roland is as gentle as a lamb. No dove was ever half so mild as he. Mild? Ye as a bushel of stamped crabs. He looked upon me as sour as verjuice. Go thy ways, thought I. Thou mayest be much in my gaskins, but nothing in my nether stocks. This is your fault, mistress, to love him that loves not you. He thinks scorn to do as he's done to. But if I were you, I'd cry. Go by, Geronimo, go by. I'd set mine old debts against my new driblets, and the hare's foot against the goose giblets. For ever if I sigh, when sleep I should take, Pray God, may I lose my maidenhead when I wake. Will my love leave me then, and go to France? I know not that, but I am sure I see him stalk before the soldiers. By my troth, he is a proper man, but he is proper that proper doth. Let him go snick up, young mistress. Get thee to London, and learn perfectly whether my lacy go to France or no. Do this, and I will give thee for thy pains my cambric apron, and my romish gloves, my purple stockings, and a stomacher. Say, wilt thou do this, Sybil, for my sake? Will I, quoth Ah, at her suit? By my troth, yes, I'll go. A cambric apron, gloves, a pair of purple stockings, and a stomacher. I'll sweat in purple, mistress, for you. I'll take anything that comes a god's name. O oh, rich, a cambric apron, faith and have it up, tails all. I'll go jiggy-joggy to London, and be here in a trice, young mistress. Exit. Do so, good Sybil. Meantime, wretched I will sit and sigh for his lost company. Exit. Scene two. A street in London. Enter Lacy, disguised as a Dutch shoemaker. How many shapes have gods and kings devised thereby to compass their desired loves? It is no shame for Roland Lacy, then, to clothe his cunning with the gentle craft, that, thus disguised, I may unknown possess the only happy presence of my rose. For her have I forsook my charge in France, incurred the king's displeasure, and stirred up rough hatred in mine uncle Lincoln's breast. O oh, love, how powerful art thou that canst change high birth to baseness, and a noble mind to the mean semblance of a shoemaker. But thus it must be, for her cruel father, hating the single union of our souls, has secretly conveyed my rose from London to bar me of her presence. But I trust fortune and this disguise will further me once more to view her beauty, gain her sight. Here in Tower Street, with air the shoemaker, mean I a while to work. I know the trade, I learnt it when I was in Wittenberg. Then cheer thy hoping spirits, be not dismayed, thou canst not want— do fortune what she can, the gentle craft is living for a man. Exit. Scene three. An open yard before Eyre's house. Enter Eyre, making himself ready. Where be these boys, these girls, these drabs, these scoundrels? They wallow in the fat brewers of my bounty and lick up the crumbs of my table, yet will not rise to see my walks cleansed. Come out, you powder beef queens what nan what madge mumble crust come out you fat midriff swag belly whores sweep me these kennels that the noisome stench offend not the noses of my neighbours what firk i say what hodge open my shop windows what firk i say enter firk oh, master it's you that speak bandog and bedlam this morning. I was in a dream and mused what madman was got into the street so early. Have you drunk this morning? Your throat is so clear. Ah, well said, Firk. Well said, Firk. To work, my fine knave, to work. 
wash thy face and thou'lt be more blessed i've let them wash my face that will eat it good master send for a sous wife if you'll have my face cleaner enter hodge away sloven avaunt scoundrel good morrow hodge good morrow my fine foreman oh master good morrow you're an early stirrer here's a fair morning good morrow firk i could have slept this hour here's a brave day towards oh haste to work my fine foreman haste to work master i am dry as dust here my fellow roger talk of fair weather let us pray for good leather and let clowns and ploughboys and those that work in the fields pray for brave days we work in a dry shop what care i if it rain enter marjorie how now dame marjorie can you see to rise trip and go call up the drabs your maids see to rise i hope tis time enough tis early enough for any woman to be seen abroad i marvel how many wives in tower street are up so soon god's me tis not noon here's a yawling peace marjorie peace where's cicely bumtrinket your maid she has a privy fault she farts in her sleep call the queen up if my men want shoe thread i'll swing her in a stirrup yet yeah, that's but a dry beating here's still a sign of drought enter lacy disguised singing there was sign boar van gelderland frolic see by en he was sells drunk he could not stand up so see by en tap east a canakin drink a shown a mannequin master for my life yonder's a brother of the gentle craft if he bear not st hugh's bones i'll forfeit my bones he's some uplandish workman hire him good master that i may learn some gibble gabble twill make us work the faster peace firk a hard world let him pass let him vanish we have journey many now peace my fine firk nay nay you are best follow your man's counsel you shall see what will come on t we have not many now but we must entertain every butter box but let that pass dame for god if my master follows your counsel he'll consume little beef he shall be glad of men and he shall catch them ay oh, that he shall for god a proper man and i warrant a fine workman master farewell dame adieu if such a man as he cannot find work hodge is not for you offers to go away stay my fine hodge faith and your foreman go dame you must take a journey to seek a new journeyman if roger remove firk follows if st hugh's bones shall not be set a work i may prick mine all in the walls and go play fare ye well master good-bye dame tarry my fine hodge my brisk foreman stay firk peace pudding broth by the lord of ludgate i love my men as my life peace you gallimaffrey hodge if he want work i'll hire him one of you to him stay he comes to us good day maister and you for oak nails if i should speak after him without drinking i should choke and you friend oak are you of the gentle craft yo yo ik ben den schoolmaker then scomaker quoth ah and hark you scomaker have you all your tools a good rubbing pin a good stopper a good dresser your four sorts of awls and your two balls of wax your paring knife your hand and thumb levers and good st hugh's bones to smooth up your work yo yo be neat vorward ik hab all die dingen vor mark schools groot and clean ha <laughs> ha good master hire him he'll make me laugh so that i shall work more in mirth than i can in earnest here ye friend have ye any skill in the mystery of cordwainers ik weet niet wat jou say ik verstau you niet why thus man imitating by gesture a shoemaker at work ik verste you niet quoth ah oh yo 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 
it can that well do. Yo, yo, he speaks yawing like a jackdaw that gapes to be fed with cheese curds. Oh, he'll give a villainous pull at a can of double beer, but Hodge and I have the vantage. We must drink first, because we are the eldest journeyman. What is thy name? Uh, Hans? Uh, 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 Hans. Milter. Give me thy hand. Thou'rt welcome. Hodge, entertain him. Folk, bid him welcome. Come, Hans. Run, wife, bid your maids, your trolley bubs. Make ready my fine men's breakfasts. To him, Hodge. Hans, thou'rt welcome. Use thyself friendly, for we are good fellows. If not, thou shalt be fought with, wert thou bigger than a giant. Ye, and drunk with, wert thou, Gargantua. My master keeps no cowards, I tell thee. Ho, boy, bring him an heel block. He is a new journeyman. Enter boy. Oh, ich verstoh you. Ich mot in hof dosen kans betolen. Here, boy, nemt die scrolling, tap ins frilek. Exit boy. Quick, snipper snapper away. Folk, scour thy throat. Thou shalt wash it with Castilian liquor. Enter boy. Come, my last of the fives, give me a can. Have to thee, hands. Here, Hodge. Here, Firk. Drink, you mad Greeks, and work like true Trojans, and pray for Simon here, the shoemaker. Here, hands, and thou art welcome. Lo, dame, you would have lost a good fellow that will teach us to laugh. This beer came hopping in well. Simon, it is almost seven. Is so, dame clapper dudgeon. Is seven o'clock, and my men's breakfast not ready. Trip and go, you soused conjurer, away. Come, you mad Hyperboreans, follow me, Hodge, follow me, Hans. Come after, my fine folk. To work, to work a while, and then to breakfast. Exit. Soft. Your, your good Hans, though my master have no more wit but to call you afore me, I am not so foolish to go behind you, I being the elder journeyman. Exeunt. Scene 4. A field near Old Ford. Hollowing within. Enter Master Warner and Master Hammond, attired as hunters. Cousin, beat every break, the game's not far. This way with winged feet he fled from death, whilst the pursuing hounds, scenting his steps, find out his highway to destruction. Besides, the miller's boy told me even now he saw him take soil, and he hallowed him, affirming him to have been so embossed that long he could not hold. If it be so, tis best we trace these meadows by old ford. A noise of hunters within. Enter a boy. How now, boy? Where's the deer? Speak, sawst thou him? Oh, yeah, I seen him leap through a hedge, and then over a ditch, then at my lord's mayor's pale. Oh, he skipped me, and in went me. Horror, the hunters cried, and there, boy, there, but there he is, in mine honestly. Boy, God a mercy, cousin, let's away. I hope we shall find better sport today. Exeunt. Scene 5. Another part of the field. Hunting within. Enter Rose and Sybil. Why, Sybil, wilt thou prove a forester? Upon some, no, forester, go by no faith, mistress. The deer came running into the barn through the orchard and over the pale. I wot well, I looked as pale as a new cheese to see him. But whip, says Goodman Finclose, up with his flail, and our nick with a prong, and down he fell, and they upon him, and I upon them. By my troth we had such sport, and in the end we ended them. His throat we cut, flayed him, unhorned him, and my lord mayor shall eat of him anon when he comes. Horns sound within. Hark, hark, the hunters come. Ye best take heed. They'll have a saying to you for this deed. Enter Master Hammond, Master Warner, Huntsman, and Boy. God save you, fair ladies. Ladies? Oh, gross. Came not a buck this way? No, but two does. And which way went they, faithful hunt at those? At those? Upon some, no. When? Can you tell? Upon some, I. Good Lord! Wounds! Then farewell. Boy, which way went he? This way, sir, he ran. This way he ran indeed, fair Mistress Rose. Our game was lately in your orchard scene. Can you advise which way he took his flight? 
Follow your nose. His horns will guide you right. Thou'rt a mad wench. Oh, rich. Trust me, not I. It is not like that the wild forest deer would come so near to places of resort. You are deceived. He fled some other way. Which way, my sugar candy? Can you shoe? Come up, good honey sops. Come upon some no. Why do you stay and not pursue your game? I'll hold my life. Their hunting nags be lame. A deer more deer is found within this place. But not the deer, sir, which you had in chase. I chased the deer, but this deer chaseth me. The strangest hunting that I ever see. But where's your park? She offers to go away. Tis here, oh, stay. Impale me, and then I will not stray. They wrangle, wench. We are more kind than they. What kind of heart is that dear heart you seek? A heart, dear heart. Who ever saw the like? To lose your heart, is it possible you can? My heart is lost. Alack, good gentleman. This poor lost heart would I wish you might find. You, by such luck, might prove your heart a hind. Why luck had horns, so have I heard some say. Now God and be his will, send luck into your way. Enter the Lord Mayor and servants. What, Master Hammond, welcome to Old Ford. God's pittykins, hands off, sir. Here's my lord. I hear you had ill luck and lost your game. Tis true, my lord. I am sorry for the same. What gentleman is this? My brother-in-law. You're welcome both. Sith fortune offers you into my hands, you shall not part from hence until you have refreshed your wearied limbs. Go, Sybil, cover the board. You shall be guest to no good cheer but even a hunter's feast. I thank your lordship. Cousin, on my life, for our lost venison, I shall find a wife. Exeunt. In, gentlemen, I'll not be absent long. This Hammond is a proper gentleman, a citizen by birth fairly allied. How fit an husband were he for my girl! Well, I will in and do the best I can to match my daughter to this gentleman. Exit. End of Act Two. Act of the Shoemaker's Holiday by Thomas Decker. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act the Third. Scene One. A room in Eyre's house. Enter Lacey, otherwise Hans, Skipper, Hodge, and Ferk. Ik zal jou wat zeggen, Hans. This skip, that common from candy, is al vol. By God's sacrament, van sugar, civet, almonds, cambric, and all the dingen, thousand, thousand ding. Neemt it, Hans, neemt it for your meester. Daar bij de bills van laden. Your meester Simon R. zal goed kopen. Wat zeggen jou, Hans? Wat zeggen die wegen die kopen slopen? Oh, laugh, Hodge, laugh. My lieve broeder Furk. Bringt Maester Eyre tot den sign von Swanek, Swanekin. There shall you find this skipper and me. What second you, brother Ferg? Do it, Hodge. Come, skipper. Exant. Bring him, quoth you. He is no knavery. To bring my master to buy a ship worth the lading of two or three hundred thousand pounds. Alas, that's nothing. A trifle. A bauble, Hodge. The truth is, Ferg that the merchant owner of the ship dares not shew his head, and therefore this skipper that deals for him, for the love he bears to Hans, offers my master heir a bargain in the commodities. He shall have a reasonable day of payment. He may sell the wares by that time, and be a huge gainer himself. Yeah, but can my fellow hands lend my master twenty porpentines as an earnest penny? Poor two geese, thou would say. Here they be, Firk. Hark! They jingle in my pocket like St. Mary Overy's bells. Enter Eyre and Marjorie. Mum, here comes my dame and my master. She'll scold on my life for loitering this Monday. But all's one. Let them all say what they can. Monday's our roller-day. You sing, sir, sauce, but I beshrew your heart. I fear for this you are singing we shall smart. Smart for me, dame? Why, dame, why? Master? 
I hope you'll not suffer my dame to take down your journeyman. If she take me down, I'll take her up, yea, and take her down too, a buttonhole lower. Peace, Firk. Not I, Hodge. By the life of Pharaoh, by the Lord of Ludgate, by this beard, every hair whereof I value at a king's ransom, she shall not meddle with you. Peace, you bombast cotton candle queen. Away, queen of clubs. Quarrel not with me and my men, with me and my fine firk. I'll firk you if you do. Yeah, yeah, man, you may use me as you please, but let that pass. Let it pass, let it vanish away. Peace. Am I not Simon Eyre? Are not these my brave men, brave shoemakers, all gentlemen of the gentle craft? Prince am I none, yet am I nobly born, as being the sole son of a shoemaker. Away, rubbish, vanish, melt, melt like kitchen stuff. Yeah, yeah, tis well. I must be called rubbish kitchen stuff for a sort of knaves. Nay, dame, you shall not weep and wail in woe for me. Master, I'll stay no longer. Here's an inventor in my shop tools. Adieu, master. Hodge, farewell. Nah, stay, Firk. Thou shalt not go alone. I pray let them go. There be more maids than Morkin, more men than Hodge, and more fools than Firk. Fools? Nails? If I tarry now, I would my guts might be turned to shoe thread. And if I stay, I pray God I may be turned to a Turk and set in Finsbury for boys to shoot at. Come, Firk. Stay, my fine knaves, you arms of my trade, you pillars of my profession. What, shall a tittle-tattle's words make you forsake Simon Eyre? Avant kitchen stuff! Rip, you brown bread tannikin, out of my sight! Move me not! Have I not ta'en you from selling tripes in East Cheap, and set you in my shop, and made you hail fellow with Simon Eyre, the shoemaker? And now do you deal thus with my journeymen? Look, you powder beef queen, on the face of Hodge. Here's a face for a lord. And here's a face for any lady in Christendom. Rip, you chitterling, avaunt. Boy, bid the tapster of the boar's head Fill me a dozen cans of beer for my journeymen. A dozen cans? Oh, brave! Hod, now I'll stay. Air, in a low voice to the boy. And the knave fills any more than two, he pays for them. Exit boy. Air, out loud. A dozen cans of beer for my journeymen. Re-enter boy. Here, you mad Mesopotamians, wash your livers with this liquor. Where be the odd ten? No more, Madge, no more. Well said. Drink into work. What work dost thou, Hodge? What work? I am making a pair of shoes for my Lord Mayor's daughter, Mistress Rose. And I a pair of shoes for Sybil, my Lord's maid. I deal with her. Sybil? Fie, defile not thy fine workmanly fingers with the feet of kitchen stuff and basting ladies. Ladies of the court. Fine ladies, my lads, commit their feet to our apparelling. Put gross work to hands. Yark and seam, yark and seam. For yarking and seaming, let me alone, and I come to it. Well, master, all this is from the bias. Do you remember the ship my fellow Hans told you of? The skipper and he are both drinking at the Swan. Here be the Portuguese to give earnest. If you go through with it, you cannot choose but be a lord at least. Nay, dame, if my master prove not a lord, and you a lady, hang me. Yeah, like enough, if you may loiter and tipple thus. Tipple, dame? No, we've been bargaining with Skellum Scanderbag. Can you Dutch spreken for a ship of silk cypress laden with sugar candy? Enter boy with a velvet coat and an alderman's gown. Air puts them on. Peace, folk. Silence, tittle-tattle. Hodge, I'll go through with it. Here's a seal ring, and I have sent for a guarded gown and a damask cassock. See where it comes. Look here, Maggie. Help me, Firk. Apparel me, Hodge. Silk and satin, you mad Philistine. Silk and satin. Ha <laughs> ha, my master will be as proud as a dog in a doublet, all in beaten damask and velvet. Softly, Firk, for rearing of the nap and wearing threadbare my garments. 
How dost thou like me, Firk? How do I look, my fine Hodge? Why, now you look like yourself, master. I warrant you there's few in the city but will give you the wall and come upon you with the right worshipful. Nails, my master, looks like a threadbare cloak new turned and dressed. Lord, Lord, to see what good raiment doth. Dame, dame, are you not enamoured? How sayest thou, Maggie, am I not brisk? Am I not fine? Fine? By my troth, sweetheart, very fine. By my troth, I never liked thee so well in my life, sweetheart. But let that pass. I warrant there be many women in the city have not such handsome husbands, but only for their apparel. But let that pass, too. Re-enter Hans and Skipper. Good day, master. This be the skipper that have the skip for merchandise. The commodity been good. Named it, master, named it. God a mercy, Hans. Welcome, skipper. Where lies this ship of merchandise? The skip been in a veren. There been a sugar, civet, almonds, cambric, and a thousand, thousand things. God sacrament. Named it, master. Je zal heb goed kopen. To him, master, O oh, sweet master, O oh, sweet wares, prunes, almonds, sugar, candy, carrot roots, turnips, O oh, brave fatting meat, let not a man buy a nutmeg but yourself. Peace, Firk. Come, skipper, I'll go aboard with you. Hans, have you made him drink? Ja, ja, I kept feel good drunk. Come, Hans, follow me. Skipper, thou shalt have my countenance in the city. Exant. Yo, heb veal good drunk, quoth thou. They may well be called butter boxes when they drink fat veal and thick beer too. But come, dame, I hope you'll chide us no more. No faith, perk, no purdy, hodge. I do feel honour creep upon me, and which is more a certain rising in my flesh. But let that pass. Rising in your flesh, do you feel, say you? Ay, you may be with child, but why should not my master feel a rising in his flesh, having a gown and a gold ring on? Be you are such a shrew, you'll soon pull him down. Ha, <laughs> ha, prithee, peace. Thou makest my worship laugh, but let that pass. Come, I'll go in. Hodge, prithee, go before me. Firk, follow me. Firk doth follow. Hodge, pass out in state. Exant. Scene two. London. A room in Lincoln's house. Enter the Earl of Lincoln and Dodger. How now, good Dodger? What's the news in France? My lord, upon the 18th day of May, the French and English were prepared to fight. Each side, with eager fury, gave the sign of a most hot encounter. Five long hours both armies fought together. At the length, the lot of victory fell on our side. Twelve thousand of the Frenchmen that day died. Four thousand English, and no man of name but Captain Hyam and young Ardington. Two gallant gentlemen, I knew them well. But Dodger, pretty tell me, in this fight... How did my cousin Lacey bear himself? My lord, your cousin Lacey was not there. Not there? No, my good lord. Sure thou mistakest. I saw him shipped, and a thousand eyes beside were witnesses of the farewells which he gave me. When I with weeping eyes bid him adieu, Dodger, take heed. My lord, I am advised that what I spake is true. To prove it so, his cousin Askew, that supplied his place, sent me for him from France, that secretly he might convey himself thither. Is it even so? Dares he so carelessly venture his life upon the indignation of a king? Has he despised my love, and spurned those favours which I with prodigal hand poured on his head? He shall repent his rashness with his soul, since of my love he makes no estimate. I'll make him wish he had not known my hate. Thou hast no other news? None else, my lord. None worse, I know thou hast. Procure the king to crown his giddy brows with ample honours. Send him chief colonel, and all my hope thus to be dashed? But tis in vain to grieve. One evil cannot a worse relieve. Upon my life I have found out this plot. That old dog love that fawned upon him so, loved to that puling girl, his fair-cheeked rose. The Lord Mayor's daughter hath distracted him, and in the fire of that love's lunacy hath he burnt himself up, consumed his credit, lost the king's love, yea, and I fear his life, only to get a wanton to his wife. 
Dodger, it is so. I fear so, my good lord. It is so. Nay, sure it cannot be. I am at my wit's end, Dodger. Yea, my lord. Thou art acquainted with my nephew's haunts? Spend this gold for thy pains. Go seek him out. Watch at my lord mayor's. There, if he live, Dodger, thou shalt be sure to meet with him. Prithee, be diligent. Nay, see, thy name lived once in honour. Now tis dead in shame. Be circumspect. Exit. I warrant you, my lord. Exit. Scene three. London. A room in the Lord Mayor's house. Enter the Lord Mayor and Master Scott. Good Master Scott, I have been bold with you to be a witness to a wedding knot betwixt young Master Hammond and my daughter. Oh, stand aside. See where the lovers come. Enter Master Hammond and Rose. Can it be possible you love me so? No, no. Within those eyeballs I espy apparent likelihoods of flattery. Pray now, let go my hand. Sweet Mistress Rose, misconstrue not my words, nor misconceive of my affection, whose devoted soul swears that I love thee dearer than my heart. As dear as your own heart? I judge it right. Men love their hearts best when they are out of sight. I love you by this hand. Yet, hands off now. If flesh be frail, how weak and frail's your vow? Then by my life I swear. Then do not brawl. One quarrel loseth wife, and life and all. Is not your meaning thus? In faith you jest. Love loves to sport, therefore leave love, ye are best. What, square they, Master Scott? Sir, never doubt, lovers are quickly in and quickly out. Sweet Rose, be not so strange in fancying me. Nay, never turn aside, shun not my sight. I am not grown so fond to fond my love on any that shall quit it with disdain. If you will love me, so. If not, farewell. Why, how now, lovers? Are you both agreed? Yes, faith, my lord. Tis well. Give me your hand. Give me yours, daughter. How now, both pull back? What means this, girl? I mean to live a maid. Aside. But not to die one. Pause, ere that be said. Will you still cross me, still be obstinate? Nay, chide her not, my lord, for doing well. If she can live a happy virgin's life, tis far more blessed than to be a wife. Say, sir, I cannot. I have made a vow. Whoever be my husband, tis not you. Your tongue is quick. But, Master Hammond, no, I bade you welcome to another end. What would you have me pule and pine and pray with lovely lady, mistress of my heart, pardon your servant, and the rhymer play railing on Cupid at his tyrant's dart, or shall I undertake some martial spoil wearing your glove at tourney and at tilt, and tell me how many gallants I unhorsed? Sweet, will this pleasure you? Yea, when wilt begin? What, love rhymes, man? Fie on that deadly sin. If you will have her, I'll make her agree. Enforced love is worse than hate to me. Aside. There is a wench keeps shop in the old change. To her will I. It is not wealth I seek. I have enough and will prefer her love before the world. My good Lord Mayor, adieu. Old love for me, I have no luck with new. Exit. Now, Mammet, you have well behaved yourself. But you shall curse your coyness if I live. Who's within there? See you convey your mistress straight to the old ford. I'll keep you straight enough, for God I would have sworn the puling girl would willingly accept at Hammond's love. But banish him, my thoughts. Go, minion, in. Exit Rose. Now, tell me, Master Scott, would you have thought that Master Simon Eyre, the shoemaker, had been of wealth to buy such merchandise? "'Tis well, my lord, your honour and myself be partners with him, for your bills of lading show that heirs' gains in one commodity rise at the least to full three thousand pound besides like gain in other merchandise. "'Well, he shall spend some of his thousands now, for I have sent for him to the guildhall. "'Enter heir. "'See where he comes. Good morrow, Master Eyre. "'Poor Simon Eyre, my lord, your shoemaker. "'Well, well, it likes yourself to term you so. "'Enter Dodger. Now, Master Dodger, what's the news with you? I'd gladly speak in private to your honour. 
you shall you shall master eyre and master scott i have some business with this gentleman i pray let me entreat you to walk before to the guildhall i'll follow presently master eyre i hope ere noon to call you sheriff i would not care my lord if you might call me king of spain come master scott exant eyre and scott now master dodger what's the news you bring the earl of lincoln by me greets your lordship and earnestly requests you if you can inform him where his nephew lacy keeps is not his nephew lacy now in france no i assure you your lordship but disguise lurks here in london london is it even so it may be but upon my faith and soul i know not where he lives or whether he lives so tell my lord of lincoln lurks in london well master dodger you perhaps may start him be but the means to rid him into france i'll give you a dozen angels for your pains so much i love his honour hate his nephew and prithee so inform thy lord from me i take my leave exit dodger farewell good master dodger lacy in london i dare pon my life my daughter knows thereof and for that cause denied young master hammond in his love well i am glad i sent her to old ford god's lord tis late to guildhall i must hie i know my brethren stay my company exit scene four london a room in heir's house enter ferk marjorie hans and roger thou goest too fast for me roger o oh, ferk ay forsooth i pray thee run do you hear run to guildhall and learn if my husband master eyre will take that worshipful vocation of master sheriff upon him hie thee good ferk take it well i go and he should not take it ferk swears to forswear him yes forsooth i go to guildhall nay when oh, thou art too compendious and tedious o oh, rare your excellence is full of eloquence how like a new cart wheel my dame speaks and she looks like an old musty ale bottle going to scalding nay when thou wilt make me melancholy god forbid your worship should fall into that humour i run exit let me see now roger and hans ah forsooth dame a mistress i should say but the old term so sticks to the roof of my mouth i can hardly lick it off even what thou wilt good roger dame is a fair name for any honest christian but let that pass how dost thou hans me thank you ro well hans and roger you see god hath blessed your master and per thee if ever he comes to be master sheriff of london as we are all mortal you shall see i will have some odd thing or other in a corner for you i will not be your back friend but let that pass Hans, pray thee, tie my shoe. Yo, Ixalvro. Roger, thou knowest the size of my foot. As it is none of the biggest, so I thank God, it is handsome enough. Prithee, let me have a pair of shoes made. Cork, good Roger, wooden heel too. You shall. Art thou acquainted with never a farthingale maker nor a French hood maker? I must enlarge my bum. <laughs> How shall I look in a hood, I wonder? Purdy, oddly, I think. As a cat out of a pillory. Very well, I warrant you, mistress. Indeed, all flesh is grass. And, Roger, canst thou tell where I may buy good hair? Yes, forsooth, at the poulterer's in Gracious Street. Thou art an ungracious wag. Purdy, I mean a false hair for my periwig. Why, mistress, the next time I cut my beard you shall have the shavings of it but they are all true hairs it is very hot i must get me a fan or else a mask so you had need to hide your wicked face fie upon it how costly this world's calling is pardi but that is one of the wonderful works of god i would not deal with it is not Fark come yet hans be not so sad let it pass and vanish as my husband's worship says ich bin vrolik lord see you so mistress will you drink a pipe of tobacco oh fie upon it roger purdy 
these filthy tobacco pipes are the most idle slavering baubles that ever i felt out upon it god bless us men look not like men that use them enter rafe lame what fellow rafe mistress look here jane's husband why how now lame hans make much of him he's a brother of our trade a good workman and a tall soldier you be welcome brother per thee i knew him not how dost thou good rafe i'm glad to see thee well i would to god you saw me dame as well as when i went from london into france trust me i am sorry rafe to see thee impotent lord how the wars have made him sunburned the left leg is not well twas a fair gift of god the infirmity took not hold a little higher considering thou camest from france but let that pass i am glad to see you well and i rejoice to hear that god hath blessed my master so since my departure yea truly rafe i thank my maker but let that pass and sir rafe what news what news in france tell me good roger first what news in england how does my jane when didst thou see my wife where lives my poor heart she'll be poor indeed now i want limbs to get whereon to feed limbs hast thou not hands man thou shalt never see a shoemaker want bread though he have but three fingers on a hand yet all this while i hear not of my jane o oh, rafe your wife hardly we know not what's become of her she was here a while and because she was married grew more stately than became her i checked her and so forth away she flung never returned nor said bye nor ba and rafe you know ka mi ka di and so as i tell ye roger is not firk come yet no forsooth and so indeed we heard not of her but i hear she lives in london but let that pass if she had wanted she might have opened her case to me or my husband or to any of my men i am sure there's not any of them per day but would have done her good to his power hans look if firk be come yo yo exalvro exit hans and so as i said but rafe why dost thou weep thou knowest that naked we came out of our mother's womb and naked we must return and therefore thank god for all things no faith jane is a stranger here but rafe pull up a good heart i know thou hast one thy wife man is in london one told me he saw her a while ago very brave and neat we'll ferret her out and london hold her alas poor soul he's overcome with sorrow he does but as i do weep for the loss of any good thing but rafe get thee in call for some meat and drink thou shalt find me worshipful towards thee i thank you dame since i want limbs and lands i'll trust to god my good friends and my hands exit enter hans and firk running run good hands o oh, hodge o oh, mistress hodge heave up thine ears mistress snug up your looks on with your best apparel my master is chosen my master is called nay condemned by the cry of the country to be sheriff of the city for this famous year now to come and time now being a great many men in black gowns were asked for their voices and their hands and my master had all their fists about his ears presently and they cried i i i i and so i came away wherefore without all other grieve i do salute you mistress shreve yo my maister is the groot man the shreve did i not tell you mistress now i may boldly say good morrow to your worship good morrow good roger i thank you my good people all firk hold up thy hand here's a three penny piece for thy tidings tis but three half pence i think yes tis three pence i smell the rose but mistress be ruled by me and do not speak so poolingly tis her worship speaks so and not she no faith mistress speak me in the old key to it firk there good folk ply your business hodge hodge with a full mouth i'll fill your bellies with good cheer till they cry twang 
enter air wearing a gold chain. See, my lever brother, here comes my meester. Welcome home, Master Shreve. I pray God continue you in health and wealth. See here, my Maggie, a chain, a gold chain for Simon Eyre. I shall make thee a lady. Here's a French hood for thee. On with it, on with it. Dress thy brows with this flap of a shoulder of mutton to make thee look lovely. Where be my fine men? Roger, I'll make over my shop and tools to thee. Firk, thou shalt be the foreman. Hans, thou shalt have an hundred for twenty. Be as mad knaves as your master Simair hath been, and you shall live to be sheriffs of London. <laughs> How dost thou like me, Marjorie? Prince I am none, yet I am princely born. Firk, Hodge, and Hans. Aye, Aye, forsooth, what, what says your worship, Master, Master Sheriff? Sheriff? Worship and honour, you Babylonian knaves, for the gentle craft. But I forgot myself. I am bidden by my Lord Mayor to dinner to old Ford. He's gone before, I must after. Come, Madge, on with your trinkets. Now, my true Trojans, my fine Firk, my dapper Hodge, my honest hands. Some device, some odd crotchets. Some Morris or such like, for the honour of the gentlemen's shoemakers. Meet me at Old Ford, you know my mind. Come, Madge, away. Shut up the shop, knaves, and make holiday. Exeunt. O oh, rare, O oh, brave, come, Hodge, follow me, Hans. We'll be with them for a Morris dance. Exeunt. Scene 5. A room at Old Ford. Enter the Lord Mayor. Rose, Eyre, Marjorie in a French hood, Sybil, and other servants. Trust me, you are as welcome to Old Ford as I myself. Truly, I thank your lordship. Would our bad cheer were worth the thanks you give. Good cheer, my lord mayor, fine cheer. A fine house, fine walls, all fine and neat. Now by my troth I'll tell thee, Master Eyre, it does me good, and all my brethren, that such a madcap fellow as thyself is entered into our society. Ay, but, my lord, he must learn now to put on gravity. Peace, Maggie, a fig for gravity. <laughs> when I go to Guildhall in my scarlet gown, I'll look as demurely as a saint, and speak as gravely as a justice of peace. But now I am here at Old Ford, at my good Lord Mayor's house, let it go by. Vanish, Maggie. I'll be merry. Away with flip-flap, these fooleries, these galleries. What, honey? Prince am I none, yet am I princely born. What says my Lord Mayor? <laughs> I had rather than a thousand pound I had an heart but half so light as yours. Why, what should I do, my Lord? A pound of care pays not a dram of debt. Um, let's be merry, whilst we are young. Old age, sack, and sugar will steal upon us ere we be aware. The first three men's song. Oh, the month of May, the merry month of May, so frolic, so gay, and so green, so green, so green. Oh, and then did I unto my true love say, Sweet Peg, thou shalt be my summer's queen now. The nightingale, the pretty nightingale, the sweetest singer in all the forest choir, entreats thee, sweet Peggy, to hear thy true love's tale. Lo, yonder she sitteth, a breast against a briar. But oh, I spy the cuckoo, the cuckoo, the cuckoo. See where she sitteth. Come away, my joy. Come away, I pray thee. I do not like the cuckoo. Should sing where my Peggy and I kiss and toy. Oh, the month of May. The merry month of May, so frolic, so gay, and so green, so green, so green. And then did I unto my true love say, Sweet Peg, thou shalt be my summer's queen. 
it's well done mistress eyre pray give good counsel to my daughter i hope mistress rose will have the grace to take nothing that's bad pray god she do for i faith mistress eyre i would bestow upon that peevish girl a thousand marks more than i mean to give her upon condition she'd be ruled by me the ape still crosseth me there came of late a proper gentleman of fair revenues whom gladly i would call son-in-law but my fine cockney would have none of him you'll prove a coxcomb for it ere you die a courtier or no man must please your eye be ruled sweet rose that right for a man marry not with a boy that has no more hair on his face than thou hast on thy cheeks a courtier wash go by stand not upon pishery pashery those silken fellows are but painted images outsides outsides rose their inner linings are torn no my fine mouse marry me with a gentleman grocer like my lord mayor your father a grocer is a sweet trade plums plums and i a son or daughter should marry out of the generation and blood of the shoemakers he should pack what the gentle trade is a living for a man through europe through the world a noise put in of a tabor and a pipe what noise is this oh my lord mayor a crew of good fellows that for love to your honour are come hither with a morris dance come in my mesopotamians cheerily enter hodge hans Rafe, Ferk, and other shoemakers in a morris after a little dancing the lord mayor speaks master eyre are all these shoemakers all cordwainers my good lord mayor aside how like my lacy looks yonder shoemaker aside oh that i durst but speak unto my love sibyl go fetch some wine to make these drink you are all welcome we, we thank, thank your lordship, lordship. Rose takes a cup of wine and goes to Lacey. For his sake, whose fair shape thou representest, good friend, I drink to thee. Ick be danker, good freester. I see, Mistress Rose, you do not want judgment. You have drunk to the properest man I keep. Here be some have done their parts to be as proper as he. Well, urgent business calls me back to London. Good fellows, first go in and taste our cheer, and to make merry as you homeward go, spend these two angels in beer at Stratford Bow. To these two, my mad lads, Simair adds another. Then cheerily, Firk, tickle it, hands, and all for the honour of shoemakers. All go dancing out. Come, Master Eyre, let's have your company. Exant. Sibyl, what shall I do? Why? What's the matter? That Hans, the shoemaker, is my love, Lacey, disguised in that attire to find me out. How should I find the means to speak with him? What, mistress? Never fear. I dare venture my maidenhead to nothing, and that's great odds that Hans, the Dutchman, when we come to London, will not only see and speak with you, but in spite of all your father's policies, steal you away and marry you. Will this not please you? Do this, and ever be assured of my love. Away, then, and follow your father to London, lest your absence cause him to suspect something. Tomorrow, if my counsel be obeyed, I'll bind you prentice to the gentle trade. Exant. End of Act Three. Act of the Shoemaker's Holiday by Thomas Decker. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act of Fourth. Scene One. A street in London. Jane in the seamstress shop, working. Enter Master Hammond, muffled. He stands aloof. Yonder's the shop, and there my fair love sits. She's fair and lovely, but she is not mine. Oh, that she were! Thrice have I courted her, thrice hath my hand been moistened with her hand, whilst my poor famished eyes do feed on that which made them famish. I am unfortunate. I still love one, yet nobody loves me. 
I muse in other men what women see that I so want. Fine Mistress Rose was coy, and this too curious. Oh, no, she is chaste and chaste, and for she thinks me wanton, she denies to tear my cold heart with her sunny eyes. How prettily she works, O oh, pretty hand! O oh, happy work! It doth me good to stand unseen to see her. Thus I oft have stood in frosty evenings, a light burning by her enduring biting cold, only to eye her. One only look hath seemed as rich to me as a king's crown. Such is love's lunacy. Muffled I'll pass along, and by that try whether she know me. Sir, what is to buy? What is to lack, sir? Calico or lawn? Fine cambric shirts or bands? What will you buy? Aside. That which thou wilt not sell. Faith yet I'll try. How do you sell this handkerchief? Good cheap. And how these ruffs? Cheap too. And how this band? Cheap too. All cheap. How sell you then this hand? My hands are not to be sold. To be given then? Nay, faith, I come to buy. But none knows when. Good sweet, leave work a little while. Let's play. I cannot live by keeping holiday. I'll pay you for the time which shall be lost. With me you shall not be at so much cost. Look how you wound this cloth, so you wound me. It may be so. Tis so. What remedy? Nay, faith, you are too coy. Let go my hand. I will do any task at your command. I would let go this beauty were I not in mind to disobey you by a power that controls kings. I love you. So now part. With hands I may, but never with my heart. In faith I love you. I believe you do. Shall a true love in me breed hate in you? I hate you not. Then you must love. I do. What, are you better now? I love not you. All this, I hope, is but a woman's fray that means, come to me when she cries, away. In earnest, mistress, I do not jest. A true chaste love hath entered in my breast. I love you dearly as I love my life. I love you as a husband loves a wife. That, and no other love my love requires. Thy wealth I know is little. My desires thirst not for gold. Sweet, beauteous Jane, what's mine shall, if thou make thyself thine, all be thine. Say, judge, what is thy sentence, life or death? Mercy or cruelty lies in thy breath. Good, sir, I do believe you love me well. For tis a silly conquest, silly pride for one like you, I mean, a gentleman, to boast that by his love tricks he hath brought such and such women to his amorous lure. I think you do not so, yet many do, and make it even a very trade to woo. I could be coy as many women be, feed you with sunshine smiles and wanton looks, but I detest witchcraft. Say that I do constantly believe you constant have. Why dost thou not believe me? I believe you, but yet, good sir, because I will not grieve you with hopes to taste fruit which will never fall. In simple truth, this is the sum of all. My husband lives. At least I hope he lives. Pressed was he to these bitter wars in France. Bitter they are to me by wanting him. I have but one heart, and that heart's his due. How can I then bestow the same on you? Whilst he lives, his I live, be it ne'er so poor, and rather be his wife than a king's whore. Chaste and dear woman, I will not abuse thee, although it cost my life if thou refuse me. Thy husband pressed for France. What was his name? Rafe Damport. Damport. Here's a letter sent from France to me from a dear friend of mine, a gentleman of place. Here he doth write their names that hath been slain in every fight. I hope death's scroll contains not my love's name. Cannot you read? I can. Peruse the same. To my remembrance such a name I read amongst the rest. See here. I me. He's dead! He's dead! If this be true, my dear heart's slain. Have patience, dear love. Hence! 
hence nay sweet jane make not poor sorrow proud with these rich tears i mourn thy husband's death because thou mournst that bill is forged tis signed by forgery i'll bring thee letters sent besides to many carrying the like report jane tis too true come weep not mourning though it rise from love helps not the mourn yet hurts them that mourn for god's sake leave me whither dost thou turn forget the dead love them that are alive his love is faded try how mine will thrive tis now no time for me to think on love tis now best time for you to think on love because your love lives not though he be dead my love to him shall not be buried for god's sake leave me to myself alone twould kill my soul to leave thee drowned in moan answer me to my suit and i am gone say to me yea or no no then farewell one farewell will not serve i come again come dry these wet cheeks tell me faith sweet jane yea or no once more once more i say no once more be gone i pray else will i go nay then i will grow rude by this white hand until you change that cold no here i'll stand till by your hard heart nay for god's love peace my sorrows by your presence more increase not that you thus are present but all grief desires to be alone therefore in brief thus much i say and saying bid adieu if ever i wed man it shall be you o oh, blessed voice dear jane i'll urge no more thy breath hath made me rich death makes me poor exeunt scene two london a street before Hodge's shop. Hodge at his shopboard. Rafe, Firk, Hans, and a boy at work. Hey, down, a down, down, derry. Well said, my hearts. Ply your work today, we loitered yesterday. To it pell mell that we may live to be Lord Mayors, or Aldermen at least. Hey, down, a down, derry. Well said, in faith. How sayest thou, Hans? Doth not Firk tickle it? your mister not so neither my organ pipe squeaks this morning for want of liquorin hey down a down derry forward fork tall best on yolly youngster hort i maister ik bid you cut me on pair of ampers von maister jeffrey's uh, boots thou shalt hans master how now boy pray now you're in the cutting vein, cut me out a pair of counterfeits, or else my work will not pass current. Hey, down, a down. Tell me, sirs, are my cousin Mrs. Priscilla's shoes done? Your cousin? No, master, one of your aunts, hanger. Let them alone. I am in and with them. She gave charge that none but I should do them for her. Thou do for her, then twill be a lame doing, and that. she loves not. Ralph, thou mightst have sent her to me. In faith, I would have yerked and firked your Priscilla. Hey, down, a down, derry, this gear will not hold. How sayest thou, Firk? Were we not merry at Old Ford? How? Merry? Why, our buttocks went jiggy-joggy like a quagmire. Well, Sir Roger Oatmeal, if I thought all meal of that nature, I would eat nothing but bag puddings. Of all good fortunes, my fellow hands had the best. Tis true, because Mistress Rose drank to him. Well, well, work apace. They say seven of the aldermen be dead or very sick. I care not, I'll be none. No, nor I. But then my master heir will come quickly to be Lord Mayor. Enter Sibyl. Whoop! Yonder comes Sibyl. Sibyl, welcome, in faith. And how dost thou, mad wench? Sib Hoare, welcome to London. God a mercy, sweet feck. Good Lord Hodge, what a delicious shop you have got. You tickle it, I faith. God a mercy, Sibyl, for our good cheer at Old Ford. That you shall have, Ralph. Nay, by the mass we had tickling cheer, Sibyl, and how the plague dost thou and Mistress Rose and my Lord Mayor? I put the women in first. Well, God a mercy, but God's me, I forget myself. 
Where's Hans the Fleming? Hark, Butterbox, now you must yelp out some sprechen. Vot begay you? Vot vod you, Freester? Mary, you must come to my young mistress to pull on her shoes you made last. Var ben your eagle fro? Ver ben your mistress? Mary, here at our London house in Cornhill. Will nobody serve her turn but hands? No, sir. Come, Hans, I stand upon needles. Why then, Sybil, take heed of pricking. For that, let me alone. I have a trick in my budget. Come, Hans. Yo, yo, Ixal meet you again. Exit Hans and Sybil. Go, Hans, make haste again. Come, who lacks work? I, master, for I lack my breakfast. Tis munching time and past. Is't so? Why, then leave work, Rafe, to breakfast. Boy, look to the tools. Come, Rafe, come, Firk. Exeunt. Scene three. The same. Enter a serving man. Let me see now. The sign of the last in Tower Street. Mass, yonder's the house. What hall? Who's within? Enter Rafe. Who calls there? What want you, sir? Mary, I would have a pair of shoes made for a gentlewoman against tomorrow morning. What, can you do them? Yes, sir, you shall have them. But what length's her foot? Why, you must make them in all parts, like this shoe. But at any hand, fail not to do them, for the gentlewoman is to be married very early in the morning. How? By this shoe must it be made. By this? Are you sure, sir, by this? How by this am I sure by this? Art thou in thy wits? I tell thee, I must have a pair of shoes. Dost thou mark me? A pair of shoes, two shoes, made by this very shoe, this same shoe, against tomorrow morning by four o'clock. Dost thou understand me? Canst thou do it? Oh, yes, sir, yes, I, 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 I can do it. By this shoe, you say? I should know this shoe. Yes, sir, yes, by this shoe I can do it. Four o'clock, well. Whither shall I bring them? To the sign of the Golden Ball in Watling Street. Inquire for one Master Hammond, a gentleman, my master. Yea, sir, by this shoe, you say? I say Master Hammond at the Golden Ball. He's the bridegroom, and those shoes are for his bride. They shall be done by this shoe. Well, well, Master Hammond at the golden shoe. I would say the golden ball. Uh, very well, very well. But I pray you, sir, where must Master Hammond be married? At St. Face Church, under Paul's. But what's that to thee? Prithee, dispatch those shoes. And so, farewell. Exit. By this shoe, said he. How am I amazed by this strange accident? Upon my life, this was the very shoe I gave my wife when I was pressed for France, since when, alas, I never could hear of her. It is the same, and Hammond's bride no other but my Jane. Enter Firk. Snails, Ralph, thou hast lost thy part of three pots a countryman of mine gave me to breakfast. I care not. I have found a better thing. A thing? A way. Is it a man's thing or a woman's thing? Firk, dost thou know this shoe? No, by my troth. Neither doth that know me. I have no acquaintance with it. Tis a mere stranger to me. Why, then I do. This shoe, I durst be sworn, once covered the instep of my Jane. This is her size, her breadth. Thus trod my love. These true love knots I pricked. I hold my life by this old shoe. I shall find out my wife. Ha ha! Old shoe that weren't new. How a murrain came this ague fit of foolishness upon thee? Thus, Firk, even now here came a serving man. By this shoe, would he have a new pair made against tomorrow morning for his mistress that's to be married to a gentleman? And why may not this be my sweet Jane? And why mayest not thou be my sweet ass, ha <laughs> ha? Well, laugh and spare not. But the truth is this, 
against tomorrow morning I'll provide a lusty crew of honest shoemakers to watch the going of the bride to church. If she proves Jane, I'll take her in despite from Hammond and the devil were he by. If it be not my Jane, what remedy? Irov, I am sure I shall live till I die, although I never with a woman lie. Exit. Thou lie with a woman to build nothing but cripple gates. Well, God sends fool's fortune, and it may be he may light upon his matrimony by such a device, for wedding and hanging goes by destiny. Exit. Scene 4. London. A room in the Lord Mayor's house. Enter Hans and Rose, arm in arm. How happy I am by embracing thee! Oh, I did fear such cross mishaps did reign that I should never see my rose again. Sweet Lacey, since fair opportunity offers herself to further our escape, let not too overfond esteem of me hinder that happy hour. Invent the means, and rose will follow thee through all the world. Oh, how I surfeit with excess of joy made happy by thy rich perfection! But since thou payest sweet interest to my hopes, redoubling love on love, let me once more like to a bald-faced debtor crave of thee, this night, to steal abroad, and at Eyre's house, who now by death of certain older men is mayor of London, and my master once, meet thou thy lacy, where in spite of change your father's anger and mine uncle's hate, our happy nuptials will we consummate. Enter Sybil. O oh God, what shall we do, mistress? Shift yourself, your father's at hand. He's coming, he's coming. Uh, Master Lacey, hide yourself in my mistress. For God's sake, shift yourselves. Your hither comes, sweet Rose. What shall I do? Where shall I hide me? How shall I escape? A man, and want wit in extremity? Come, come. Be hand still, play the shoemaker, pull on my shoe. Enter the Lord Mayor. Mass, and that's well remembered. Here comes your father. Forvar, maitress, tis un good school. Ixal vel dut o ye son nit batalen. Oh God, it pincheth me. What will you do? Aside. Your father's presence pincheth, not the shoe. Well done, fit my daughter well, and she shall please thee well. Yo, yo, ik weet dat wel, voorwaar, tis een goed school, tis gemeet van niets leder, zie eber mean hier. Enter apprentice. I do believe it. What's the news with you? Please you, the Earl of Lincoln at the gate is duly lighted and would speak with you. The Earl of Lincoln come to speak with me? Well, well, I know his errand. Daughter Rose, send hence your shoemaker, dispatch, have done. Sib, make things handsome. Sir boy, follow me. Exit. Mine uncle come? Oh, what may this portend? Sweet Rose, this of our love threatens an end. Be not dismayed at this. Whate'er befall, Rose is thine own. To witness I speak the truth, where thou appointest the place, I'll meet with thee. I will not fix a day to follow thee, but presently steal hence. Do not reply. Love which gave strength to bear my father's hate shall now add wings to further our escape. Exeunt. Scene 5. Another room in the same house. Enter the Lord Mayor and the Earl of Lincoln. Believe me, on my credit I speak truth. Since first your nephew Lacey went to France, I have not seen him. It seemed strange to me when Dodger told me that he stayed behind, neglecting the high charge the king imposed. Trust me, Sir Roger Oatley. I did think your counsel had given head to this attempt, drawn to it by the love he bears your child. Here I did hope to find him in your house. But now I see mine error, and confess my judgment wronged you by conceiving so. Lodge in my house, say you. Trust me, my lord, I love your nephew Lacey too, too dearly, so much to wrong his honour. And he hath done so, that first gave him advice to stay from France. To witness I speak truth, I let you know how careful I have been to keep my daughter free from all conference or speech of him. Not that I scorn your nephew, but in love I bear your honour, lest your noble blood should by my mean worth be dishonoured. 
Aside. How far the churl's tongue wanders from his heart. Well, well, Sir Roger Oatley, I believe you. With more than many thanks for the kind love, so much you seem to bear me. But, my lord, let me request your help to seek my nephew, whom if I find, I'll straight embark for France. So shall your rose be free, my thoughts at rest, and much care die which now lies in my breast. And to Sybil. Oh, lord, help for God's sake, my mistress, oh, my young mistress. Where is thy mistress? What's become of her? She's gone. She's fled. Gone? Whither is she fled? I know not, forsooth. She fled out of doors with Hans the shoemaker. I saw them scud, 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 apace, apace. Which way? What, John? Where be my men? Which way? I know not, and it please your worship. Fled with a shoemaker? Can this be true? O oh, Lord, sir, as true as God's in heaven. Her love turned shoemaker? I am glad of this. A Fleming butter-box, a shoemaker. Will she forget her birth, requite my care with such ingratitude? Scorn she young Hammond to love a hunnikin, a needy knave? Well, let her fly. I'll not fly after her. Let her starve if she will. She's none of mine. Be not so cruel, sir. And to feck with shoes. I am glad she escaped. I'll not account of her as of my child. Was there no better object for her eyes but a foul, drunken lubber, swill-belly, a shoemaker? That's brave. Ye forsooth, tis a very brave shoe, and as fit as a pudding. How now, what knave is this? From whence comest thou? No knave, sir, I am Firk the shoemaker, Lusty Roger's chief, lusty journeyman, and I have come hither to take up the pretty leg of sweet Mistress Rose, and thus, hoping your worship is in as good health as I was at the making hereof, I bid you farewell, yours, Firk. Stay, stay, sir knave. Come hither, shoemaker. Tis happy the knave is put before the shoemaker, or else I would not have vouchsafed to come back to you. I am moved, for I stir. My lord, this villain calls us knaves by craft. Then tis by the gentle craft, and to call one knave gently is no harm. Set your worship, Mary. Sib, your young mistress. I'll so bob them now my master heir is Lord Mayor of London. Tell me, sir, whose man are you? I'm glad to see your worship so merry. I have no more to this gear, no stomach as yet to a red petticoat. Pointing to Sybil. He means not, sir, to woo you to his maid, but only doth demand whose man you are. I sing now to the tune of Rogero. Roger, my fellow, is now my master. Sirrah, knowest thou one Hans, a shoemaker? Hans, shoemaker? Oh, yes, stay, yes, I have him. I tell you what, I speak it in secret. Mistress Rose and he are by this time, no, not so, but shortly, are to come over one another with Can you dance the shaking of the sheets? It is that, Hans. Aside. I'm so gull these diggers. Knowest thou then where he is? Yes, forsooth, ye, marry. Canst thou in sadness? No, forsooth, no, marry. Tell me, good honest fellow, where he is, and thou shalt see what I'll bestow on thee. Honest fellow? No, sir, not so, sir. My profession is the gentle craft I care not for seeing. I love feeling. Let me feel it here, orium tennis, ten pieces of gold, Genum tenors, ten pieces of silver, and then Firk is your man in a new pair of stretchers. Here is an angel, part of thy reward which I will give thee. Tell me where he is. No point. Shall I betray my brother? No. Shall I prove Judas to hands? No. Shall I cry treason to my corporation? No. I shall be Firked and yerked then. But give me your angel. Your angel shall tell you. Do so, good fellow, tis no hurt to thee. Send simpering Sib away. Her swife get you in. Exit Sibyl. Pitchers have ears and maids have wide mouths, but for hands prawns, upon my word, tomorrow morning he and young Mistress Rose go to this gear. They shall be married together by this rush, or else turn Firk to a firkin of butter to tan leather withal. 
But art thou sure of this? Am I sure that Paul's steeple is a handful higher than London stone, or that the pissing conduit leaves nothing but pure mother bunch? Am I sure I am lusty Firk? God's nails, do you think I am so base to gull you? Where are they married? Dost thou know the church? I never go to church, but I know the name of it. It's a uh, swearing church. Stay a while, tis I by the mass. Uh, no, no, tis I by my troth. No, nor that. Tis I by my faith. That, that, tis I by my faith's church under Paul's cross. There they shall be knit like a pair of stockings in matrimony. There they will be in coney. Upon my life, my nephew Lacey walks in the disguise of this Dutch shoemaker. Yes, forsooth. Doth he not, honest fellow? No, forsooth. I think Hans is nobody but Hans, no spirit. My mind misgives me now. Tis so, indeed. My cousin speaks the language, knows the trade. Let me request your company, my lord. Your honourable presence may, no doubt, refrain their headstrong rashness, when myself going alone perchance may be o'erborne. Shall I request this favour? This? Or what else? Then you must rise betimes, for they mean to fall to their hay-pass and repass, pindy-pandy, which hand will you have very early? My care shall every way equal their haste. This night accept your lodging in my house, the earlier shall we stir, and at St. Faith's prevent this giddy hair-brained nuptial. This traffic of hot love shall yield cold gains. They ban our loves, and we'll forbid their bans. Exit. At St. Faith's church thou sayest? Yes, by their troth. Be secret, on thy life. Exit. Yes, when I kiss your wife, ha ha, here's no craft in the gentle craft. I came hither of purpose with shoes to Sir Roger's worship, whilst Rose, his daughter, be coney catched by hands. Soft now, these two gulls will be at St. Faith's Church tomorrow morning, to take Master Bridegroom and Mistress Bride napping, and they, in the meantime, shall chop up the matter at the Savoy. But the best sport is, Sir Roger Oatley will find my fellow lame Ralph's wife going to marry a gentleman, and then he'll stop her instead of his daughter. Oh, brave, there will be fine, tickling sport. Soft now, what have I to do? Oh, I know, now a mess of shoemakers meet at the wallsack in Ivy Lane to cousin my gentleman of lame Ralph's wife. That's true. Alack. Calack girls hold out tack, for now smocks for this jumbling shall go to rack. Exit. End of Act Four. Act for the Shoemaker's Holiday by Thomas Decker. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act the Fifth. Scene one, a room in Eyre's house. Enter Eyre, Marjorie, Hans, and Rose. This is the morning, then. Stay, my bully, my honest hands, is it not? This is the morning that must make us too happy or miserable. Therefore, if you away with these ifs and ands, ands, and these etc. By mine honour, Roland Lacey, none but the king shall wrong thee. Come, fear nothing. Am I not Sim Eyre? Is not Sim Eyre Lord Mayor of London? Fear nothing, Rose. Let them all say what they can. Dainty, come thou to me. Laughest thou? Good, good, my lord. Stand her friend in what thing you may. Why, my sweet lady Maggy, think you Simon Eyre can forget his fine Dutch journeyman? No, va. Fie, I scorn it. It shall never be cast in my teeth that I was unthankful. Lady Maggie, thou hast never covered thy Saracen's head with his French flap, nor loaden thy bum with this farthingale. Tis trash, trumpery, vanity. Simon Eyre had never walked in a red petticoat, nor wore a chain of gold, but for my fine journeyman's Portuguese. <laughs> and shall I leave him? No. Prince am I none, yet bear a princely mind. My lord, tis time for us to part from hence. Lady Maggie, 
Lady Madgy, take two or three of my pie-crust eaters, my buff jerkin varlets that do walk in black gowns at Simon Eyre's heels. Take them, good Lady Madgy, trip and go, my brown queen of periwigs, with my delicate rose and my jolly Rowland to the Savoy. See them linked, countenance the marriage, and when it is done, cling, cling together, you Hamborough turtle doves. I'll bear you out. Come to Simon Air. Come, dwell with me, Hans. Thou shalt eat minced pies and march pain. Rose away, cricket. Trip and go, my lady Madgy, to the Savoy. Hans, wed, and to bed. Kiss and away. Go, vanish. Farewell, my lord. Make haste, sweet love. She'd fain the deed were done. Come, my sweet rose, faster than deer will run. Exant Hans, Rose, and Marjorie. Go, vanish, vanish, avaunt, I say. By the Lord of Ludgate, it's a mad life to be a Lord Mayor. It's a stirring life, a fine life, a velvet life, a careful life. Well, Simon Eyre yet set a good face on it in the honour of St. Hugh. Soft, the King this day comes to dine with me, to see my new buildings. His Majesty is welcome. He shall have good cheer, delicate cheer, princely cheer. This day my fellow prentices of London come to dine with me too. They shall have fine cheer, gentlemanlike cheer. I promised the mad Cappadocians, when we all served at the conduit together, that if ever I came to be mayor of London, I would feast them all. And I'll do it, I'll do it, by the life of Pharaoh. By this beard, Simair will be no flincher. Besides, I have procured that upon every Shrove Tuesday, at the sound of the pancake bell, my fine, dapper Assyrian lads shall clap up their shop windows and away. This is the day, and this day they shall do it. They shall do it. Boys, that day you are free. Let masters care, and prentices shall pray for Simon Eyre. Exit. Scene 2. A street near St. Faith's Church. Enter Hodge, Firk, Rafe, and five or six shoemakers, all with cudgels or such weapons. Come, Rafe, stand to it, Firk. My masters, as we are the brave bloods of the shoemakers, heirs apparent to St. Hugh, and perpetual benefactors to all good fellows, thou shalt have no wrong. For Hammond, a king of spades, he should not delve in thy close without thy sufferance. But tell me, Rafe, are thou sure tis thy wife? Am I sure this is Firk? This morning, when I stroked on her shoes, I looked upon her, and she upon me, and sighed, asked me if ever I knew one Rafe. Yes, said I, for his sake, said she, tears standing in her eyes, and for thou art somewhat like him, spin this piece of gold. I took it. My lame leg and my travel beyond sea made me unknown. All is one for that. I know she's mine. Did she give thee this gold, O oh, glorious glittering gold? She's thine own, tis thy wife, and she loves thee. For I'll stand to it, there's no woman will give gold to any man, but she thinks better of him than she thinks of them she gives silver to. And for Hammond, neither Hammond nor Hangman shall wrong thee in London. Is not our old master heir Lord Mayor? Speak my hearts. Yes, yes and, and Hammond shall, shall know it to his to cost. His cost. Enter Hammond, his serving-man, Jane, and others. Peace, my bullies, yonder they come. Stand to it, my arts. Firk, let me speak first. No, Rafe, let me. Hammond, whither away so early? Unmannerly, rude slave, what's that to thee? To him, sir? Yes, sir, and to me, and others. Good morrow, Jane, how dost thou? Good Lord, how the world is changed with you, God be thanked. Villains, hands off! How dare you touch my love? Villains, down, down with them! them. Cry clubs for prentices. Hold, my hearts. Touch her, Hammond? Yea, and more than that, we'll carry her away with us. My masters and gentlemen, never draw your bird spits. Shoemakers are steel to the back, men every inch of them, all spirit. Well, and what of all this? I'll show you. Jane? Dost thou know this man? Tis Rafe, I can tell thee. Nay, tis he in faith, though he be lamed by the wars. Yet look not strange, but run to him, 
fold him about the neck and kiss him. Lives then my husband. Oh, God, let me go. Let me embrace my Rafe. What means my Jane? Nay, what meant you to tell me he was slain? Pardon me, dear love, for being misled. To Rafe. Twas rumoured here in London thou wert dead. Thou seest he lives. Lass, go, pack home with him. Now, Master Hammond, where's your mistress, your wife? Swans, master, fight for her. Will you thus lose her? Down, down with, with that, that creature. creature. Clubs, Clubs. Down, down with, him. with him. Down with him. Hold, hold. Hold, fool. Sirs, he shall do no wrong. Will my Jane leave me thus and break her faith? Yea, sir, she must, sir. She shall, sir. What then? Mend it. Hark, fellow, Rafe, follow my counsel. Set the wench in the midst, and let her choose her man, and let her be his woman. Whom should I choose? Whom should my thoughts affect, but him whom heaven hath made to be my love? Thou art my husband, and these humble weeds makes thee more beautiful than all his wealth. Therefore I will but put off his attire, returning it into the owner's hand, and ever after be thy constant wife. Not a rag, Jane. The law's on our side. He that sows in another man's ground forfeits his harvest. Get thee home, Rafe. Follow him, Jane. He shall not have so much as a busk point from thee. Stand to that, Ralph. The appurtenances are thine own. Hammond, look not at her. Oh, Swans, no. Blue coat, be quiet. We'll give you a new livery else. We'll make Shrove Tuesday St. George's Day for you. Look not, Hammond, leer not. I'll firk you. For thy head now, one glance, one sheep's eye, anything at her. Touch not a rag, lest I and my brethren beat you to clouts. Come, Master Hammond, there's no striving here. Good fellows, hear me speak. An honest Rafe, whom I have injured most by loving Jane, mark what I offer thee. Here in fair gold is twenty pound. I'll give it thee for thy Jane. If this content thee not, thou shalt have more. Sell not thy wife, Rafe. Make her not a whore. Say, wilt thou freely cease thy claim at her, and let her be my wife? No, no do, do not, not Rafe. Sir Hammond, Hammond, dost thou think a shoemaker is so base to be a bod to his own wife for commodity? Take thy gold, choke with it. Were I not lame, I would make thee eat thy words. A shoemaker sell his flesh and blood? Oh, indignity! Sir, take up your pelf, and be packing. I will not touch one penny, but in lieu of that great wrong I offered thy Jane, to Jane and thee I give that twenty pound. Since I have failed of her, during my life, I vow no woman else shall be my wife. Farewell, good fellows of the gentle trade. Your morning mirth my morning day hath made. Exit. To the serving man. Touch the gold creature, if you dare. You are best be trudging. Here, Jane, take thou it. Now let's home, my hearts. Stay. Who comes here? Jane, on again with thy mask. Enter the Earl of Lincoln, the Lord Mayor, and servants. Yonder's the lying varlet mocked us so. Come hither, sirrah. I, sir? I am sirrah? You mean me, do you not? Where is my nephew married? Is he married? God give him joy, I'm glad of it. They have a fair day, and the sign is in a good planet, Mars in Venus. Villain, thou toldst me that my daughter Rose this morning should be married at St. Faith's. We have watched there these three hours at the least, yet see we no such thing. Truly, I am sorry for it. The bride's a pretty thing. Come to the purpose. Yonder's the bride and bridegroom you look for, I hope. Though you be lords, you are not to bar by your authority, men from women, are you? See, see, my daughter's masked. True, and my nephew, to hide his guilt, counterfeits him lame. Yea, truly, God help the poor couple, they are lame and blind. I'll ease her blindness. I'll his lameness cure. Lie down, sirs, and laugh. My fellow Ralph is taken for Roland Lacey, and Jane for Mistress Damas Grose. This is all my knavery. What have I found you, minion? O oh, base wretch! Nay, hide thy face, the horror of thy guilt can hardly be washed off. Where are thy powers? What battles have you made? Oh, yes, I see. Thou fought'st with shame, and shame hath conquered thee. 
This lameness will not serve. Unmask yourself. Lead home your daughter. Take your nephew hence. Hence? Swoons, what mean you? Are you mad? I hope you cannot enforce my wife from me. Where's Hammond? Your wife? What, Hammond? Yea, my wife. And therefore, the proudest of you that lays hands on her first, I'll lay my crutch cross his pate. To him, lame Ralph, he is brave sport. Rose call you her? Why, her name is Jane. Look here else, do you know her now? And masking Jane. Is this your daughter? No, nor this your nephew. My lord of Lincoln, we are both abused by this base crafty varlet. Ye, forsooth, no varlet, forsooth, no base, forsooth, I am but mean, no crafty neither, but of the gentle craft. Where is my daughter Rose? Where is my child? Where is my nephew Lacey married? Why, here is good laced mutton, as I promised you. Villain, I'll have thee punished for this wrong. Punish the journeyman villain, but not the journeyman shoemaker. Enter Dodger. My lord, I come to bring unwelcome news. Your nephew Lacey and your daughter Rose early this morning wedded at the Savoy, none being present but the Lady Mayoress. Besides, I learnt among the officers the Lord Mayor vows to stand in their defence against any that shall seek to cross the match. There's ere the shoemaker uphold the deed. Yes, sir, shoemakers dare stand in a woman's quarrel, I warrant you, as deep as another, and deeper too. Besides, his grace today dines with the mayor, who on his knees humbly intends to fall and beg a pardon for your nephew's fault. But I'll prevent him. Come, Sir Oatley, the king will do us justice in this cause. However their hands have made them man and wife, I will disjoin the match or lose my life. Exant. Adieu, Monsieur Dodger. Farewell, fool, ha <laughs> ha, oh, if they had stayed, I would have so lambed them with flouts. O oh, heart, my codpiece point is ready to fly in pieces every time I think upon Mistress Rose, but let that pass as my lady mayoress says. This matter is answered. Come, Rafe, home with thy wife. Come, my fine shoemakers, let's to our masters, the new Lord Mayor, and there swagger this Shrove Tuesday. I'll promise you wine enough, for Madge keeps the cellar. O oh, oh, Rev, Madge, Madge is a, is a good, good winch. winch. And I'll promise you meat enough for simpering Susan keeps the larder. I'll lead you to victuals, my brave soldiers. Follow your captain. O oh, brave, hark, hark. Bell rings. The pancake bell, bell rings. rings. The, the pancake, pancake bell. bell. Trill in my hearts. Heart. O oh, brave, O oh, sweet bell, O oh, delicate pancakes, open the doors, my hearts, and shut up the windows. Keep in the house, let out the pancakes. O oh, rare, my hearts, let's march together for the honour of St. Hugh to the great new hall, in gracious street corner, which our master, the new Lord Mayor, hath built. O oh, the crew of good fellows that will dine at my Lord Mayor's cost today. By the Lord, my Lord Mayor is a most brave man. How shall prentices be bound to pray for him and the honour of the gentlemen shoemakers? Let's feed and be fat with my lord's bounty. O oh, musical bell, still, O oh, hodge, O oh, my brethren, there's cheer for the heavens. Venison pasties walk up and down, piping hot, like sergeants. Beef and brewess comes marching in dry vats, fritters and pancakes comes, troweling in, in wheelbarrows, hens and oranges hopping, in porters' baskets, Collops and eggs in scuttles, and tarts and custards comes quavering in in malt shovels. Enter more apprentices. Woof, look, look, here, look, here, look here, look here. How now, mad lads? Whither away so fast? Whither? Why, to the great hall, know you not why? The Lord Mayor hath bidden all the apprentices in London to breakfast this morning. Oh, oh brave, brave shoemaker. shoemaker. Oh, oh brave, brave lord, lord of incomprehensible good fellowship. Good fellowship. Who oh, hark you, you, the pancake bell, 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 bell rings. rings. Cast up caps. Nay more, my heart, every shrove Tuesday is our year of jubilee, and when the pancake bell rings, we're as free as my Lord Mayor. We may shut up our shops and make holiday. I'll have it called St. Hugh's Holiday. Agreed, agreed. agreed. St. Hugh's, Hugh's Holiday. And this shall continue forever. Oh, brave, come, 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 my heart, away, away. away. away.
O oh, eternal credit to us of the gentle craft, much fair my hearts, O oh, rare! Exeunt. Scene three. A street in London. Enter the king and his train across the stage. Is our Lord Mayor of London such a gallant? One of the merriest madcaps in your land. Your grace will think when you behold the man, he's rather a wild ruffian than a mayor. Yet thus much I'll ensure your majesty. In all his actions that concern his state, he is as serious, provident, and wise, as full of gravity amongst the grave, as any mayor hath been these many years. I am with child till I behold this huffcap, but all my doubt is when we come in presence his madness will be dashed clean out of countenance. It may be so, my liege. Which to prevent, let someone give him notice, tis our pleasure that he put on his wanted merriment. Set forward. On a four. Exeunt. Scene four. A great hall. Enter Air, Hodge, Firk, Rafe, and other shoemakers, all with napkins on their shoulders. Come, my fine Hodge, my jolly gentlemen shoemakers. Soft, where be these cannibals, these varlets, my officers? Let them all walk and wait upon my brethren. For my meaning is that none but shoemakers, none but the livery of my company, shall in their satin hoods wait upon the trencher of my sovereign. O oh, my lord, it will be rare. No more, Firk. Come, lively. Let your fellow prentices want no cheer. Let wine be plentiful as beer, and beer as water. Hang these penny-pinching fathers that cram wealth in innocent lambskins. Rip knaves avaunt. Look to my guests. My lord, we are at our wit's end for room. These hundred tables will not feast the fourth part of them. Then cover me those hundred tables again and again till all my jolly prentices be feasted. Avoid, Hodge. Run, Rafe. Frisk about my nimble folk. Carouse me fathom healths to the honour of the shoemakers. Do they drink lively, Hodge? Do they tickle it, folk? Tickle it? Some of them have taken their liquor standing so long that they can stand no longer, but for meat they would eat it, and they had it. Want they meat? Where's this swag belly, this greasy kitchen stuff cook? Call the varlet to me. Want meat? Fur codge, lame rafe. Run, my tall men, beleaguer the shambles, beggar all east cheap. Serve me whole oxen in charges. And let sheep whine upon the tables like pigs for want of good fellows to eat them. Want meat? Vanish, Firk. Avaunt, Hodge. Your lordship mistakes my man Firk. He means their bellies want meat, not the boards, for they have drunk so much they can eat nothing. The second three men's song. Colds the wind and wets the rain. Since you be our good speed, ill is the weather that bringeth no gain, no helps good hearts in need. Crow the bow, the jolly nut brown bow, and hear kind mates to thee. Let's sing a dirge. For Saint you so, and down it merrily. Down a down, he down a down, he dairy dairy down a down. Oh, well done to me, let come, ring compass, gentle joy. Trowel the bowl, the nut brown bowl, and hear kind mates to thee. Let's sing a dirge for Saint Hugh's soul, and down it merrily. Down a down, hey down a down, hey dairy. Down, down. 
Ho, well done to me, let's come. Ring compass gentle joy. Trowel the bowl, the net brow bowl, and hear kind mates to thee. Cold's the wind, and wet's the rain. Since you be our good speed, ill is the weather that bringeth no gain, nor helps good hearts in need. Enter Hans, Rose, and Marjorie. Where is my lord? How now, Lady Maggie? The king's most excellent majesty is new come. He sends me for thy honour. One of his most worshipful peers bade me tell thou must be merry, and so forth. But let that pass. Is my sovereign come? Vanish my tall shoemakers, my nimble brethren. Look to my guests, the prentices. Yet stay a little. How now, Hans? How looks my little rose? Let me request you to remember me. I know your honour easily may obtain free pardon of the king for me and rose, and reconcile me to my uncle's grace. Have done, my good hands, my honest journeyman. Look cheerily. I'll fall upon both my knees till they be as hard as horn, but I'll get thy pardon. Good, my lord. Have a care what you speak to his grace. Away, you Islington white pot. Hence, you hopper ass, you barley pudding full of maggots, you broiled carbonado. Avant, avant, avoid Mephistopheles. Shall Sim here learn to speak of you, Lady Maggie? Vanish, Mother Minerva Cap. Vanish, go, trip and go. Meddle with your partlets and your pishery pashery, your flues and your whirly gigs. Go, rub, out of mine alley. Sim here knows how to speak to a pope, to Sultan Solomon, to Tamburlaine. Anywhere here? And shall I melt? Shall I droop before my sovereign? No, come, my lady Maggy. Follow me, Hans. About your business, my frolic freebooters. Firk, frisk about. And about, and about. For the honour of Mad Simon Air, Lord Mayor of London. Hey, for the honour of the shoemakers. Exant. Scene five. An open yard before the hall. A long flourish or two. Enter the king, nobles, heir, Marjorie, Lacey, Rose. Lacey and Rose kneel. Well, Lacey, though the fight was very foul of your revolting from our kingly love and your own duty, yet we pardon you. Rise both, and Mistress Lacey, thank my Lord Mayor for your young bridegroom here. So, my dear liege, Simair and my brethren, the gentlemen shoemakers, shall set your sweet majesty's image cheek by jowl by saint hugh for this honour you have done poor simon heir i beseech your grace pardon my rude behaviour i am a handicraftsman yet my heart is without craft i would be sorry at my soul that my boldness should offend my king nay i pray thee good lord mayor be even as merry as if thou wert among thy shoemakers it does me good to see thee in this humour Sayst thou me so, my sweet Diocletian? Then, humph! Prince am I none, yet am I princely born. By the lord of Ludgate, my liege, I'll be as merry as a pie. Tell me, in faith, madair, how old thou art? My liege, a very boy, a stripling, a yunker. You see not a white hair in my head, not a grey in this beard. Every hair, I assure thy majesty, that sticks in this beard, Sim air values at the king of Babylon's ransom. Tamar Cham's beard was a rubbing brush to it. Yet I'll shave it off and stuff tennis balls with it to please my bully king. But all this while I do not know your age. My liege, I am six and fifty year old. Yet I can cry, humph, with a sound heart for the honour of St. Hugh. Mark this old wench, my king. I danced the shaking of the sheets with her six and thirty years ago, and yet I hope to get two or three young lord mayors ere I die. I am lusty still, sim air still. Care and cold lodging brings white hairs. My sweet majesty, let care vanish, 
cast it upon thy nobles it will make thee look always young like apollo and cry humph prince am i none yet am i princely born <laughs> say cornwall didst thou ever see his like not i my lord enter the earl of lincoln and the lord mayor lincoln what news with you my gracious lord have care unto yourself for there are traitors here traitors where, where? Who? who traitors in my house god forbid where be my officers i'll spend my soul ere my king feel harm where is the traitor lincoln here he stands cornwall lay hold on lacy lincoln speak what canst thou lay unto thy nephew's charge this my dear liege your grace to do me honour heaped on the head of this degenerate boy desertless favours you made choice of him to be commander over powers in france but he good lincoln prithee pause a while even in thine eyes i read what thou wouldst speak i know how lacy did neglect our love ran himself deeply in the highest degree into vile treason is he not a traitor lincoln he was now have we pardoned him it was not a base want of true valour's fire that held him out of france but love's desire i will not bear his shame upon my back nor shalt thou lincoln i forgive you both then good my liege forbid the boy to wed one whose mean birth will much disgrace his bed are they not married no my liege we, we are. are shall i divorce them then oh be it far that any hand on earth should dare untie the sacred knot knit by god's majesty i would not for my crown disjoin their hands that are conjoined in holy nuptial bands how sayest thou lacy wouldst thou lose thy rose not for all india's wealth my sovereign but rose i'm sure her lacy would forego if rose were asked that question she'd say no you hear them lincoln yea my liege i do yet canst thou find in the heart to part these two who seeks besides you to divorce these lovers i do my gracious lord i am her father sir roger oatley our last mayor i think the same my liege would you offend love's laws well you shall have your wills you sue to me to prohibit the match soft let me see you both are married lacy art thou not i am dread sovereign then upon thy life i charge thee not to call this woman wife i thank your grace o oh, my most gracious lord kneels nay rose never woo me i tell you true although as yet i am a bachelor yet i believe i shall not marry you can you divide the body from the soul yet make the body live yea so profound i cannot rose but you i must divide this fair maid bridegroom cannot be your bride are you pleased lincoln oatley are you pleased yes, yes my, my lord. lord then must my heart be eased for credit me my conscience lives in pain till these who i'm divorced be joined again lacy give me thy hand rose lend me thine be what you would be kiss now so that's fine at night lovers to bed now let me see which of you all mislikes this harmony will you then take from me my child perforce why tell me oatley shines not lacy's name as bright in the world's eye as the gay beams of any citizen yes but my gracious lord i do mislike the match far more than he her blood is too too base lincoln no more dost thou not know that love respects no blood cares not for difference of birth or state the maid is young well-born fair virtuous a worthy bride for any gentleman besides your nephew for her sake did stoop to bear necessity and as i hear forgetting honours and all courtly pleasures to gain her love became a shoemaker as for the honour which he lost in france thus i redeem it lacy kneel thee down arise sir roland lacy tell me now tell me in earnest oatley canst thou chide seeing thy rose a lady and a bride i am content with what your grace hath done and i my liege since there's no remedy come on then all shake hands i'll have you friends where there is much love all discord ends what says my mad lord mayor to all this love oh my liege this honour you have done to my fine journeyman here roland lacy and all these favours which you have shown to me this day in my poor house 
will make Simon Eyre live longer by one dozen of warm summers more than he should. Nay, my mad Lord Mayor, that shall be thy name. If any grace of mine can length thy life, one honour more I'll do thee. That new building which at thy cost in Cornhill is erected shall take a name from us. We'll have it called the Leaden Hall, because in digging it you found a lead that covereth the same. Oh, I thank your majesty. God bless your grace. Lincoln, a word with you. Enter Hodge, Firk, Rafe, and more shoemakers. How now, my mad knaves? Please speak softly, yonder is the king. With the old troop which there we keep in pay, we will incorporate a new supply. Before one summer more passed over my head, France shall repent. England was injured. What are all those? All shoemakers, my liege, sometime my fellows. In their companies I lived as merry as an emperor. My mad lord mayor, are all these shoemakers? All shoemakers, my liege, all gentlemen of the gentle craft, true Trojans, courageous cordwainers. They all kneel to the shrine of holy Saint Hugh. God, God save, save your majesty. majesty. Mad Simon, would they anything with us? Mum, mad knaves, not a word, I'll do it. I warrant you. They are all beggars, my liege, all for themselves, and I for them all on both my knees do entreat that for the honour of poor Simon Eyre and the good of his brethren, these mad knaves, your grace would vouchsafe some privilege to my new leaden hall that it may be lawful for us to buy and sell leather there two days a week. Mad Sim, I grant your suit you shall have patent to hold two market days in leaden hall. Mondays and Fridays, those shall be the times. Will this content you? Jesus bless your grace. In the name of these, my poor brethren shoemakers, I most humbly thank your grace. But before I rise, seeing you're in the giving vein and we in the begging, grant Simere one boon more. What is it, my Lord Mayor? Vouchsafe to taste of a poor banquet that stands sweetly waiting for your sweet presence. I shall undo thee, heir, only with feasts. Already have I been too troublesome. Say, have I not? Oh, my dear king, Sim Eyre was taken unawares upon a day of shroving, which I promised long ago to the prentices of London. For it please your highness, in time past, I bear the water tankard, and my coat sits not a whit the worse upon my back. And then, upon a morning, some mad boys, it was Shrove Tuesday, even as tis now, gave me my breakfast, and I swore then, by the stopple of my tankard, if ever I came to be Lord Mayor of London, I would feast all the prentices. This day, my liege, I did it, and the slaves had an hundred tables five times covered. They are gone home and vanished. Yet add more honour to the gentle trade, taste of ears banquet, Simon's happy maid. Eh? I will taste of thy banquet, and will say, I have not met more pleasure on a day. Friends of the gentle craft, thanks to you all. Thanks, my kind Lady Mayoress, for our cheer. Come, lords, a while, let's revel it at home. When all our sports and banquetings are done, wars must right wrongs which Frenchmen have begun. Exant. End of Act 5 End of The Shoemaker's Holiday by Thomas Decker